This gold Nintendo 64 that was released in Toys R Us and comes with two controllers is probably the rarest console variation for the Nintendo 64 in North America. Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, Lithium here from my channel Nintendo Collecting. This is something really special that we have today to take a look at. Like I said, two controllers exclusive to Toys R Us. This one was released in North America, in Canada, and in the United States. This variation is American because I can tell there's only English text on the box. If it was released in Canada, you would have both English and French on the box. So let's get to this. In this video, I'm also going to mention and discuss the Blister Pack Gold Controller that was also exclusive to Toys R Us. Does anyone else miss Toys R Us? It is still available in Canada, and I think there's still one at least in the United States so let me know if you still miss it because I had such great memories going in there and at least you can still do that if you ever take the trip to Canada so on this box on the top we've got blue and I want to go over how iconic these characters are these five characters six really so you have Joanna Dark from the perfect dark series made by rare Banjo Kazooie also made by rare Link from The Legend of Zelda, Mario, and Kirby. And then on the side, the yellow side, we have the four colors for the N64 here. You have the gold controller kind of image. Then you have three of the different accessories for the N64. The expansion pack, the controller pack, which is also known as the memory card, and the rumble pack. And look at these six colors for the fantastic multi-color set. Choose from a variety of colors, sold separately of course. Ice, jungle, fire, watermelon, smoke, and grape. This is what got me into collecting consoles and all the different variations. On the other side, it is red. For some reason, Joanna Dark didn't make the red side. Not really sure why. They could have moved everyone over and she would have made it. And then on the bottom, we have the green side. And my console here is not in mint condition, as you can see. There's a little bit of fading on the box. There's a rip right here, which is really unfortunate. But it is so hard to find this set, especially in pretty good condition, let alone in mint condition, I guess, with all the baggies and everything. So this does come with a lot of the extra stuff inside. On the back, I do want you to realize that if this is put together well on their styrofoam, you should be able to see the serial number right through this window. So you can see that the console's right there as well. Turning this over, it's kind of interesting to note some stuff on this box packaging. So this was released in 2001. So a lot of the games on the back here were like recent releases over the last few years. Great iconic single player games like Majora's Mask for The Legend of Zelda, Super Mario 64, my favorite game of all time, Paper Mario, and then Banjo-Tooie, but I think it had some multi, of course it had some multiplayer components. From Pokemon, you've got Pokemon Stadium, Pokemon Puzzle League, and Hey You Pikachu. Other single player experiences that I really enjoyed, you have Kirby the Crystal Shards. You have Perfect Dark, great multiplayer game from Rare, like I mentioned. Mickey Speedway USA. You have Mario Tennis, such an iconic game that I used to play with friends. Turok 3. Turok is one of my buddy Jordans. He gets a shout out almost every video now. It's one of his favorite series of all time. They remade the first two, I think, on the Switch for that. Excite Bike 64. Design your own tracks and you can race them and it's a great racing game. WWF No Mercy. Such good games on the system at this time. Look at that picture of Mario. I'd love to have that as a poster. And even Bowser over here looks fantastic. It's kind of interesting and cool that they have the N64 Sports logo on here. And they're really just trying to push that mechanic that you get to be able to play sports games. Multiplayer, four player on the Nintendo 64. All right, enough of that. Let's open this up and see what it comes with. So this system, you might be wondering, I did buy this system on eBay from my memory years ago, years and years ago, probably at least eight years ago. When I bought it, I got a really good deal, of course, because now this system is selling for roughly, on average, around $1,000, depending on condition. I'm going to go over the various prices for this a little bit more later in the video, but I can tell you I only paid for this, it was less than $200, so it was a really good deal back then, but even just two or three years ago, this was going for not nearly as much as it's going for right now. Now the prices are skyrocketing, everything's skyrocketing because everyone wants to get into collecting and hopefully more people are realizing that, hey, Nintendo's pretty cool, it's kind of neat to have this kind of stuff, especially in the box, and Toys R Us, even neater. 
So the second controller for this kind of makes this a unique thing. There's very few systems for the N64 that were released with two controllers. There's at least another one that came with a gray controller, an atomic purple controller with the original system. So if you are getting the second controller, there is this cardboard insert that houses the second controller because the box is a little bit longer than normal. So please note, if you're a completionist, you're also after this piece of cardboard. Hopefully it's not too damaged in any way. Just going to put the controller on the side. We have the instructions. Talk more about those in a bit. Let's just pull everything out first. The console. The other controller. You have really good condition this stuff. I don't think this is new, but also note that most of these systems didn't have a sticker seal on them. Some of the stores chose to put a sticker seal on this, sticker seal, but this one never had it. So when people say like it's factory sealed console for the Nintendo 64, most of them were never sealed and there's no way of proving it. So someone could package it up like this and claim that it's new, but it's really hard to tell. This looks new, but I could probably repackage it and make it look like this if I really needed to, to be honest. So just be really aware of that, even this one here. Looks really good, looks unused. These ones might be used, maybe they were swapped out for another one. It's really hard to tell. Just a quick note about the styrofoam. You would want the styrofoam to be in really good condition if you can help it. On the inside, mine says NUS-HB, and then it has a recycle logo up here with a 06 and a PS, I believe, up in the top right there. It's a little bit difficult to see those things. Mine has some slight damage that you can see here, and it looks like someone from putting their thumb here trying to grab this and pull it out of the box damaged it a little bit. But you definitely want to get the styrofoam, Getting the box, the styrofoam, the inserts, all of that increases the value of these kinds of items. So let's take a look at the system. Gold system, it should come in a bag with the red text on one side, no text on the other side of the bag. So let's pull this out. You're looking to hope that there's no scratches on the system. It's gold. It's very prone to damage and it can definitely be scratched over time. You're also looking that it has everything. It has the matching cover for the memory expansion. Inside the memory expansion, you're hoping it even still has this sticker that says, do not remove jumper pack from control deck, see instruction booklet on it. So hopefully you're getting that little sticker on it as well. You're also hoping that you get all the stickers that should be on the console, on the back. There is a number here that you could call. This says that this is the installation, installation, maintenance, and service Nintendo Authorized Repair Center. So you would call this number in the 90s and in the early 2000s for the help. So that's one of the stickers you want to see on this. You also want to see the serial number, and you want to see the sticker up here that represents what region this is from. So you can make out right here it says... NUS-001USA. So this is the North American one. If you were getting the Japanese console, which is over there, it would not say USA, obviously, on the back of it. So hopefully your console comes without damage, without scratches, in pretty good condition. And it also should have this cover down here. So make sure it has that as well that matches the system. One interesting note about the console. If you look inside where you put the game, mine has what it looks to be something like jungle green components inside. Some of the N64s have this. I would imagine that maybe they just used the components from a jungle green console, or maybe they painted jungle green systems. Let me know if you have an official gold system, and if yours is the exact same, but from my experience, every one that I have seen has had the green inside of this system. Not all the systems, just at least this gold system, which is kind of just interesting interesting to note. The controllers also come in a bag that has the red fonts and then they have the cord. The cord here to me does not look like this is authentic. Look at how messy this cord's put together and it's using a green twist tie. There's no way Nintendo would have used a green twist tie in this. It should have been black. So this is not a brand new controller. Again, you're looking for nicks or any sort of damage on the controller itself. So this one does have some little damage over here. The joystick, you would hope that it's tight and it snaps back into spot. This one looks pretty good. It looks like it's a 9 out of 10 probably at least. And you can also move the joystick and try and see if there's any dirt inside of there. The more dirt, probably it means it was used a little bit more. And then on the back, you're looking at the handle. This one has a little bit of damage right here on the handle. So overall, this controller is not mint. It's in pretty good condition. I would probably give it something like a 7 or an 8 out of 10 for this first controller. This second controller is in even better condition than the first. 
same sort of baggie, so you're getting a baggie with both of them. And this controller, overall joystick does snap back, it's not perfect, but there's a little bit less damage, I believe, on this controller. No, it's about the same, there's still a little bit of mark here that you can see from someone using these. So these controllers, in my opinion, were definitely used, it happens to have the same green twist tie, again, I don't think Nintendo would have done that. So hopefully you're getting the controllers in pretty good condition with good joysticks that snap back. In terms of the AV cables and the AC adapter, they should have their own bags, but the bags are not sealed. They are opened. Black twist tie makes sense to me in this kind of design. This is what I've seen from other systems. Again, it's so hard to tell if these were actually brand new. And the AC adapter should have an open bag as well. The bag's twist tied like this. So let me know if you know for sure if this is how it was bundled up when it was brand new, but it's really, really hard to tell after all these years. The instruction manuals. This is the thing I'm the most insert, uncertain about, but it does come with a bag for the instruction manuals. This instruction booklet is specific to the United States. There are other ones that are Canadian, but I do want to show you here. It says USA-6 for the one that I got anyways. For other regions in the world, I do have a Canadian one here just to show you the difference. The Canadian one says CAN-5. So just note you with this system, because mine's from North America, from the USA, it should say USA on that. For some reason, mine also came with the Consumer Information and Precautions booklet. This is what came with games. I'm not 100% confident that that should be in here or not, because this does not include a game. And this came with the Store 64. I believe this is the exact same insert that my Donkey Kong 64 set came with. That's Jungle Green that came with DK64 in it. But I am not positive that this is the original copy that would have come with this system. I would have imagined that there's something for Toys R Us in the instruction manual. I tried doing research. I tried looking at the ones that were sold on eBay and ones that are posted, but I just couldn't find out that information specifically. So if you know anything more or what did your system come with for the inserts, I would love to know. To go over rarity and pricing next. In terms of rarity, it's hard to find a lot of information on this. I can scour eBay and see how many things were sold, and there was only a handful of them in the last six months were sold. There's also a website that deals with console variations. I believe it listed this as a 73, a 73 to a 75 in terms of rarity score, and there are a lot of different N64s that are more rare worldwide, but most of them are just the normal black system with a different sticker on it. So this one is amongst the rarest, and I think it's the rarest in North America overall, especially trying to find this. The two controller set. I don't think it was ever released in North America with one controller, by the way. In terms of pricing, if you're looking at getting a set that's similar to this condition, if you're spending anywhere between $700 and $800, that's probably the going rate now. Two or three years ago, it was like a third of that to roughly half of that, and now the prices are just going up and up and up. If it was in mint condition with everything, with the baggies, with the manuals, with the second controller and that cardboard insert I mentioned, some of them have sold for over $1,000 to $1,200. Personally, if I could find this today for 500 bucks, US dollars of course, I would be really, really happy with that kind of deal. That's a lot of money to spend on a system, but this is such a cool, unique piece, especially with the Toys R Us aspect. A lot of people love this kind of thing. If you just want to get the box, an empty box, cardboard's worth a lot now, especially Nintendo cardboard, not speaking about Labo, but other Nintendo cardboard like this, there is one of these on eBay right now for $350 just for the box, and it's so hard to find other auctions that are sold like that. You could technically probably buy the box and try and pick up all the other pieces and maybe put it together for less than $700, but I'm not sure if you're going to find those really unique pieces that are supposed to come in here and truly make it complete. If you just want the console deck, you think it's pretty cool, and you want a gold console deck, then you can probably find this for anywhere between $100 to $150, depending on condition, and depending on how scratched up it is. If it's mint, probably $150. If it's not, then closer to $100. If it comes with the cords, then you can probably add about $20 to it, roughly. The controllers, though... A controller that's not in very good condition, so maybe the joystick's a little bit loose, it does have some damage on the handles or anything like that, usually sells for around $40. If the controller's in more mint shape, then it goes for $60, maybe up a little bit more from that. 
So if you want to buy the system with one controller and the cords, they're all over the place in terms of value and cost, but I think it's just because it's convenient that you're getting the controller with the matching console. Sometimes those sell for about $170 to $220, anywhere in that range right now in 2020. Who knows what it'll be in a few years. Next up, I want to talk about this blister pack for the Nintendo 64. This is again, Toys R Us exclusive. These are hard to find. There are a handful of them on eBay. The one that's on eBay right now that I saw is trying to go for $500. I have seen some sell for $300 to $400, something in that range. And it's really hard to find these in mint condition. You can see that mine has some dent damage on the front. On the side, looks pretty good on this side, but the other side does have some cracking in here. So it's kind of just broken, which is really common. And the back has some damage to this as well. So if I were to find this, and I found it for roughly probably $300, I would be relatively happy paying $300 to try and get this because it is harder to find. Again, in a few years, who knows how expensive these will be. This is the seventh in the line of blister pack sealed controllers. There's the six fantastic colors that I mentioned earlier, plus this one to make seven of them. And that is all of them, and they're only available in North America. So if you can find it and you're interested in it, you can probably search for blister N64, or you can search for Toys R Us Gold Controller, and this should hopefully come up on eBay, but there's not very many of them for sale, and it's so hard to find these. There's a lot of other cool gold items for the Nintendo 64. So not only is there the system from Japan, there's also two gold controllers from Japan, one in a white box, one in a gold box, but they're identical to the ones from North America. And of course we have the gold games for the Nintendo 64 for The Legend of Zelda. You have the collector's edition for Ocarina of Time, and you have the collector's edition for Majora's Mask that came with special gold cartridges that I had on display over there just because I thought it would be cool. And actually, Ocarina of Time was always a gold box. Most of the games are in a gold box. This is the Player's Choice Million Seller version. It's just cool to kind of include those gold items in a video like this. Let me know what your thoughts are on this incredibly rare system that might be, like I said, the most expensive console variation in my collection, which shocked me, especially with some of the GameCubes that I have that are really hard to find, and the other N64s, like the Jusco and the Die Hawks, that are really rare also. Let me know what is your favorite console variation in your collection. That would be really cool. Subscribe to the channel if you've never subscribed before or seen a video before. I try and get videos out on Wednesdays and Sundays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Really appreciate you guys watching. You're awesome. Stay awesome. Go collect them all. Keep smiling while gaming. Thanks so much for watching, everyone. Stay safe.